This video, we are going to be tackling the leak code question group anagrams. And just to start off easy, let's talk about what exactly an anagram is. So a anagram can be briefly explained like this. If you look to the left here, just look at this word. What are different words that you could spell with this word? With the word heart, we could spell the word earth. With the word eat, we could spell the word T. And that is, in essence, what exactly an anagram is. It's just a big word to explain words that you could rearrange to form other words. But the trick with this question is that they are going to give you an array. And what they want you to do is be able to identify the different anagrams. So we have eat, and I'll just use the red here to separate them out. We've got eat, T, and then we have eight. So those are three groups of anagrams right here. Then we have tan, nat. So we have tan and nat, and bat is different. Bat doesn't actually, bat is kind of by itself. And we have bat over here by itself, like I said. And they want you to separate these out into arrays. So if we look over here, we've got them separated out into individual arrays and leak code does not care what order they are in so these arrays can be in different order the words can be in different order as well too but they need to be separated out by arrays now here's the million dollar question how do we even go about solving this question what we are going to do is we are going to build a dictionary on top of a dictionary what exactly do i even mean by that well we know that we're going to have to iterate through every single word. We're going to try to match words based on their letters to see if we can rearrange those letters, but how are we going to be able to identify if a word has those exact same letters? What we're going to do is we're pretty much going to build our own hash for every single word that we iterate over, and we're going to check those words against this hash. But how is this hash going to be able to identify the letters in the word? If you look closely here, this hash is actually a representation for eat. And eat is going to be identified by 26 zeros and ones. And each one of these zeros and ones represents the letter. So we have an A, so we have a one right here. We have an E, so we have an E right here. We have a T, so we have a T right where this word is. And each one of these denotes a specific letter. And we're going to compare them against each other. And that's how we're going to group them. So we just skipped a lot of steps and did a 10,000 foot overview. But I'm going to explain things in a little bit more detail so that you don't get confused. So first things first, as you probably already guessed, we're going to iterate through each and every word in this array. And then we're going to iterate through every single letter with a nested for loop. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, I thought nested for loops were bad. Not always. In our case, our time complexity is going to be n times n because we only have to iterate through every single letter once. What are we going to do as we iterate through each and every letter in every single word? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to first create just a regular old array. And we're going to assign ones to places in memory as if they are letters in the alphabet. What do I mean by that? Well, first, we're going to iterate over our E. And we're going to place a one where the four indexes as if there is an E in the alphabet there. And it's almost going to be like an alphabet map with an array with an A, so we'll say we, we iterate to the A and eat, we're going to place a one where the A would be in that array, and T is going to be no different. We're going to place a one where the T would be in a zero indexed based array, and we're going to pretty much create an alphabet map using an array. After we get done, we're going to have an array of zeros and ones that looks a lot like this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over every single value in this array and we're going to create a quasi hash that looks something like this. You may be asking yourself, well, why are we going to create a hash of zeros, ones, and bang symbols? We're going to do this because we're going to create a dictionary that's going to allow us to compare the values. and. There may be some circumstances where you don't have to have a immutable data structure, but most of the time when you are having keys within a dictionary, 
the key value actually has to be immutable and most arrays in most languages are mutable. So we need to create a string out of it. And the string is going to be used as a key to group the values. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead, let's hop into VS Code and let's actually start coding it. So I'm inside of Visual Studio Code right now. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to the left here and I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it Solution. And within this method, we are going to have the actual boilerplate for the leak code question. We're returning a nested array, an array of arrays. So it's going to look a little bit something like this, I lists, and we're going to have an I list, a nested array of strings. So if that looks confusing to you, that's basically what that is. And we're going to have the name group anagrams. It's going to have an array of strings. I'm just going to call it STRS, that is what leak code calls it. And first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check a couple edge cases. You always wanna check the edge cases first because it'll kill your time complexity if you don't. Doesn't mean you probably won't fail the interview if you don't check for edge cases, but it will kill your time complexity and it will also do it in real life too. So it's kind of a good thing to learn. Um, and then we're going to return you guessed it, an array, a nested array, if, if we have a length of zero. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and declare our dictionary, and this dictionary is going to uh, first have a string as a key, which is going to be our hash, our quasi hash code that we're about to generate. And the left part is going to be the group of anagrams, so it's going to be a list of strings, and we'll just go ahead and call this anagrams and go ahead and new that up. Next thing after this, this is where we're going to actually iterate through each and every single word. And this iteration is going to be incredibly simple. We don't even need to use a traditional for loop. We can just get away with a for each and we'll say string in st or word in strs and we're going to pass it the ar string array that we got from the actual leak code question or we're going to get from leak code. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to create an array. We need to create the alphabet mapping via the array. And if you don't remember what I'm talking about, this is where we're going to iterate through each and every letter and we're going to place a one or increment based on that letter in a zero index based array. So if we have an E, we're going to place an E at four. If we have an A, We'll place an A, or we'll place a one at A, and you get the picture. So in order to do this, we're going to iterate. We have to have a nested for loop. And with it, we can even get away with a for each in this one too. So we'll say char C, and this is the, the char is just the individual letter. Remember that a char is just an individual letter. And this is the code that's going to do the actual adding for us. So every single place in memory is going to add it based on the map in the alphabet. Okay, next part. Here's where we're actually going to turn this alphabet mapping into a string. So once we get done, we'll have something that looks like this, that we're going to iterate over every single letter and we're going to just build out a string with bang symbols, ones and zero. So we're gonna go ahead, go back and we're going to whip out our old friend, Mr. String Builder. So we're gonna go ahead and new up our friend, Mr. String Builder here. And Mr. String Builder is going to give us access to all types of uh, methods. So after we get done newing it up, we're going to create a traditional for loop. This is what's actually going to iterate <clears throat> over the array that we just created. So we'll go int i is equal to zero. We want to start at the very beginning. We want to iterate all the way to the 26 because there's not more than 26 letters in the alphabet. We don't want to go over that. And here's where we're going to use a pen. Now, the reason that we're using string builder is because if you modify a string, it kills your space and time complexity. So uh, we do not want to just manipulate a string on its own like that. And I don't think C-sharp will even allow you to do it. I think you actually have to use a string builder in order to manipulate a string like we're doing. So after we get done, we need to convert everything over into a string. Right now it's just a string builder some type of string builder data structure, but we need to convert it over to an actual string. And that's what we're going to do. And 
here's where we're going to actually check if the key is not already in the dictionary. So if the key is not actually already in the dictionary, we're going to add it with an empty list. So we're going to go over to here. We'll say if the, basically we're going to check our anagram dictionary where we're going to store all our anagrams. We're going to check if it contains key and we're going to go ahead, pass in the key like this and we'll go ahead. If it's not in there, this is where we're going to actually add it as a new list. So we'll go new list string. Now the next part is where we're going to actually add the original word to the list of anagrams for this key. So we're going to go down here and if it doesn't actually contain it, this is the part that's going to actually do the adding. So we'll say anagrams key, and we'll use a method here. We don't actually have to use this method, but I'm going to anyway, and we're going to go ahead and pass the word in there. And here at the very end, this is where we're actually going to convert everything over from that dictionary into a list. And this is actually going to be a lot easier than you think it would be. So next thing, we'll just have a new right here. We're going to return a nested array. So it's going to be a list. And within this list, we're going to have an I list of strings. And the great thing about dictionaries is that we get this nifty little property here that's going to return all the values for us. We don't have to do any type of extra iteration and looks like I've got a missing bracket right here. So go ahead, add that bracket. Everything's looking good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this code here and we're going to go ahead, run our test within leak code. So I'm going to go ahead, get all this and let's hop over into leak code. So let's go ahead, we're going to go ahead, paste this in looking pretty good. Looks like there's no need for any type of alignment. There's no alignment issues. Let's go ahead and run it. Yes. I was actually kind of worried about that. I'm not going to lie. So let's go ahead, submit it, make sure that our time complexity is good. And we're not, we don't have any crazy time complexities and look, we've got our N K there or our N M, whatever you want to call it. And our space complexity is linear. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.